Good morning. I hope your day is starting off well. Have you got your guided student notes ready? Today we're going to talk about common denominators and comparing fractions. Common denominators are required if we want to compare fractions or add fractions or subtract fractions. So it's important that we figure out how to create them. So let's begin. Like we usually do, let's start off with some vocabulary. Fractions that have the same denominator are called like fractions. Like fractions have what we call a common denominator. That's how we say the same denominator. So like fractions have a common denominator. Let's find our pictures here. Remember that the denominator is the namer. It tells you what type of pieces you have. So like fractions, as an example, we might be talking about, um, oh, I don't know, 18 35ths. And then we would need some more 35ths. And it doesn't really matter how many, maybe there's only nine of them this time. But those would be like fractions because they have the same denominator. When we're comparing fractions, we're really just comparing how many of each type of unit we have and trying to decide which group is larger. So it's really no different than talking about chickens. Here we have uh, three chickens. And three chickens is certainly fewer than four chickens. I know, you gotta love a class where you have dancing chickens appear every now and then. When we compare three chickens to four chickens, it's really the same idea as comparing three sixteenths to four sixteenths. It's just a question of talking about what type of object you have. Whether it's chickens or sixteenths, three is smaller than four. Of course, with three sixteenths, we would write this as a fraction. So we would say that three sixteenths as a fraction is less than four sixteenths as a fraction. And really, that's it. It is that easy today. Whenever you have fractions, whether they be proper fractions or improper fractions, as long as they have a common denominator, comparing them is super easy. All you have to do is compare the numerators. Now remember, there are some conditions here, right? The fractions we're talking about have to have a common denominator. And then it's really easy. If the fractions don't have a common denominator, well, then we have to find one. If we are looking at mixed numbers, the process is still pretty easy. We just have to be careful and not jump to conclusions and look at the fraction first, right? When we're comparing numbers, we always look at the big part first. So the first thing that we would do is compare the whole numbers. If the whole numbers are the same, then we compare the fractions. So if the whole numbers are the same, compare the fractions. All right, let's try this. Flip the page. Our job is to put greater than, less than, or equals between the fractions to create a true statement. 
If we looked at letter A, we would be comparing 158 271 to 143 271sts. And we want to know which one is larger. Well, we've got all these pieces. The pieces are called 271sts. The first group has 158 pieces, and the second group has 143 pieces. So just by comparing the numerators, we know that 158 271sts is the larger fraction. All right, your job to do the next three. Pause the recording, give it a shot, and then come back when you are done. Okay, welcome back. Well, you can see I left the sneaky ones for you. They might be a little bit sneaky, but they're not that bad. Uh, let's look at letter B. We have 40 firsts. Negative 18 40 firsts compared to negative 6 40 firsts. Which one is larger? Really what we want to know is which larger, negative 6 or negative 18. And you'll remember when we were comparing negative numbers before, whichever number was to the right on the number line is greater. So hopefully you said that negative 18 40 firsts is less than negative 6 40 firsts. With letter C, did you jump right to the fractions? I hope not. 12 and 15 20 firsts is way less than 385 and 13 20 firsts. 385 is a much larger number. Always compare the whole numbers first. For letter D, the whole numbers are the same. Both whole numbers are 72, so then we move on to the fractions. What's larger, 125, 389 ths or 136, 389 ths um, That means that 72 and 136, 389 ths is the larger fraction. And that's it. That's really all there is to it. I can't make it any worse, any harder, any sneakier, any trickier than that. It's pretty darn easy. Okay. Fractions with different denominators, well, what do you think they're called? If they had the same denominator, they were called like fractions. So if they have different denominators, they are called unlike fractions. Oops, wrote too many words, didn't I? We just need the word unlike in the blank. So like we said before, if we want to compare fractions, add fractions, or subtract fractions, we have to have a common denominator. A common denominator is necessary. And so what we do is we choose a denominator that is a multiple of both denominators. You'll remember in our last lesson when we were creating equivalent fractions, we often took the numerator and denominator and multiplied by the same amount. So our job is to get a denominator that's the same for a pair of fractions. And there are lots of ways to do this. People often talk about the least common denominator, and a lot of times it's handy to have that one. So let's look at it a little bit. The least common denominator. is the least common multiple of the two denominators. We talked about least common multiples a little while ago, so I know you know how to find them. Let's look at example two. Our job is to write 5 sixths and 7 ninths so that they have a common denominator, and then we can compare the fractions. So the first thing we're going to do is find some common multiples of 6 and 9. We could make lists, or we could look at the prime factorizations. These numbers are small, so I think I'm just going to mentally go through a list. 9 times 1 is 9, but 6 doesn't go into 9. 9 times 2 is 18, 6 divides into 18. So 18 is a possible common multiple. 
9 times 3 is 27. 6 doesn't go into 27. 9 times 4 is 36. 6 goes into 36. So 36 is also in our list. 9 times 5 is 45. 6 doesn't go into 45. 9 times 6 is 54. 6 goes into 54. 54 will be on our list. And now we can start to see a pattern. Every common multiple is 18 away from the last one. So the next common multiple would be 72, and we could keep on going like that forever and ever. It doesn't matter which common multiple we use. So we have lots and lots of choices. The two most common choices we'll look at here. The first one is to use the least common multiple. People like the least common multiple because it's the smallest one. It keeps all of our values as manageable and small as possible. Sometimes it takes a little bit of work to find this value, though. Okay, so let's see what we have. We were going to compare 5 sixths to 7 ninths. And our first job is to write these so that they have a common denominator. So 5 sixths we would need to multiply by 3 over 3 so that we had a denominator of 18. 5 times 3 is 15. For 7 ninths, we would need to multiply 7 ninths by 2 over 2. And that would give us 14 eighteenths. Okay, so what are we doing here? I think I've kind of lost track in all of this math. Our job was to compare 5 sixths to 7 ninths. And what we did was rewrite 5 sixths as 15 eighteenths. And then we rewrote 7 ninths as 14 eighteenths. These I can compare. 15 eighteenths is clearly larger than 14 eighteenths. And what that means is that 5 sixths is going to be larger than 7 ninths. And that's all there is to it. Okay, let's try option number 2 on the next page. For option number 2, we can use the product of the denominators. And that product will be our least common denominator. So we say um, 6 times 9 is 54. So we would take 5 sixths, multiply this by something, so that we end up with 54 as the new denominator. And we will do the same thing to 7 ninths. We'll multiply that by something so that we end up with 54 as the denominator. The nice thing about this is that we don't have to guess about what the something is. We figured out 54 by multiplying 6 times 9 in the first place. So 5 sixths gets multiplied by 9 over 9. And that gives us 45 50 fourths. 7 ninths gets multiplied by 6 over 6. And that gives us 42 50 fourths. So even though the values that we're using now are much larger than before, they were a little bit easier to find. So there's a trade-off. If you're okay working with the larger numbers, then use the product of the denominators, because it's fast and easy to obtain. If you'd like to keep the numbers as small as possible, then we use the least common denominator. And there are times when both have their advantages. All right, where were we? Yes, we were comparing 5 sixths to 7 ninths again. And this time, we rewrote 5 sixths as 45 50 fourths. And we, re we rewrote 7 ninths as 42 50 fourths. The result is not going to change. 
five sixths will always be larger than seven ninths. It's just a question of what equivalent form we used to compare the two fractions. So there we go. Five sixths is larger than seven ninths. Let's try another one. Let's slide down the page here. Okay. So these are not quite as, um, I don't know, I guess they're nice enough fractions, but the numbers certainly got larger. Our job is to compare 67 seventy seconds and 127 130 fifths. And the first thing we need to do is rewrite them so they have a common denominator. Let's see which method you like the best. The first one, we're going to use the least common multiple as the common denominator. So to save us a little bit of time, I found the prime factorization of 72 for you. It's 2 to the third power multiplied by 3 to the second power. And I did the same for 135. Think back on how you found the least common multiple before. Pause the recording. See what you think the least common multiple is, and then come back. Okay, so the least common multiple is going to need twos, threes, and fives. How many twos are we going to need? Um, three factors of two should be in there because we need three factors of two as part of the 72. How about the factors of three? 72 uses two of them, 135 uses three of them. We pick the one with the larger exponent, so we'll put in three to the third power. And of course, we also need a five. If we multiply all of this out, I believe we end up with 1,080. And that is the smallest common denominator that we could possibly use. I know, it doesn't feel very small, does it? That's okay, we can deal with it. It's not a big deal. Here we go, 67 over 72. We need to multiply by something so that the new denominator is 1,080. We'll do the same thing for 127 over 135. Multiply by something so that 1,080 is the new denominator. You could certainly start with 1,080 on your calculator. Whoops, that's the wrong number. 1,080, that's better. We could divide by 72 and see that we need to multiply by 15. 15 in the numerator, 15 in the denominator. We also could have done this just by looking at the prime factorization. 72 uses three factors of two, but only two factors of three. So there's one extra and there's an extra five. That's where the 15 came from. Let's see, 67 times 15 is 1,005. 4, 135, we need to multiply by 8, right? If I check the prime factorization for the least common multiple, I already have three factors of 3 and a factor of 5. The extra stuff is here, three factors of 2, and 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So I didn't need my calculator for that one. 127 multiplied by 8 is 1016. So even though the numbers have gotten a little larger, the process is still the same. If we're going to compare 67 70 seconds to 127 130 fifths, we rewrite them so that they have the same denominator. 67 over 72 was rewritten as 1,005 over 1,080. 127 over 135 was rewritten as 1,016 over 1,080. Now that we have the same denominator, we can just compare the numerators. 1,016 is larger than 1,005, 
So 127 over 135 is the larger fraction. Okay. Let's check out option number two. We could use the product of the two denominators as the common denominator. So let's see, 72 multiplied by 135 is 9,720. Okay, that feels like a really big number, but it's not anything that we can't manage. Just like before, we want to take 67 over 72, multiply by something so that the new denominator is 9,720. We'll do the same thing for 127 over 135. Multiply by something so that the new denominator is 9,720. All right, pause the recording, finish this one off. Come back when you're done. Figuring out what to multiply each fraction by should have been pretty easy. 72, sorry, 67 over 72 gets multiplied by 135 over 135. 127 over 135 gets multiplied by 72 over 72. The first fraction should have come out to be 9,045 over 9,720. And the second fraction, the numerator should have been 9,144. So in comparing the fractions, it should look like this. What we're really going to do is compare the two equivalent fractions that have the same denominator. 9,144 is larger than 9,045. So 67 70 seconds is less than 127 135 ths. Okay, one more. When you look at a standard ruler, you see a lot of dividing by two. We start off with halves, divide halves in two to find, find fourths. We divide fourths in two to find eighths. Divide eighths in two to find sixteenths. And then we see 30 seconds and then 60 fourths. And so that's about as small as your standard type of ruler goes. At any rate, these are all called workplace fractions. because these are the fractions that you normally see on a tape measure, on wrenches, um, lengths of screws, diameters of pipes, things like that. And the nice thing about work uh, excuse me, the nice thing about workplace fractions is that the larger denominator is always a multiple of the smaller one. So we don't really have to do any work to figure out the least common multiple. If we were talking about fourths, and uh, eighths, then eight would be the least common multiple. If we were talking about halves and 30 seconds, then 30 seconds would be the least common multiple. So we can find the least common denominator really quickly. Let's take a look at these two pipes. Which pipe has the larger inner diameter? And so the first thing we're going to do is look at the denominators and figure out what we should use for the least common denominator. And you can see that 4 goes into 32. So 32 is going to be the least common denominator. We don't really have to work to find it at all. We just pick that largest denominator. And that means we don't have to rewrite 730 seconds at all. It's already in the form that we would like. 1 fourth needs an equivalent form, though. The job is to give it 
a denominator of 32. So let's see, 4 goes into 32 8 times. Multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 8, and we end up with 8 30 seconds. So really, 7 30 seconds stays the same. 1 fourth gets rewritten as 8 30 seconds. And then we can see that 1 fourth of an inch is larger than 7 30 seconds of an inch because 8 30 seconds is more than 7 30 seconds. Oh gosh, what was the question? Oh yes, we should always go back and make sure that we're actually answering the question, huh? Which pipe has the larger inner diameter? So the greater diameter is the quarter inch, and that would be pipe B. And there we go. So this lesson is rather short, but it's important. We're going to need to be able to find common denominators when we start adding and subtracting fractions coming up really soon. So learn this well, and we'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.